Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Gatsby. Today we are on episode number 9. As always, I am Shane Thomas. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at smthomas3. Head on over to CodeKarate.com, sign up for the newsletter, and if you're not already, subscribe on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about how to pick up where we left off last time. So last time we deployed our Gatsby site to Netlify. And remember, if you're following along, our Gatsby site's being built with Drupal as our content backend. And what we want to happen is it's kind of inconvenient if anytime we make a change in Drupal, we have to re, you know, go to Netlify and rebuild our site. Just uh, it's an extra step we don't necessarily want. So what we want to do is we want to have it so when we change content on our Drupal site, it's very easy to trigger our Gatsby site that's hosted on Netlify to rebuild. So it pulls in that new content. So it makes it a little bit easier of a content workflow. So in the past, we already talked about how to set up live preview. That's uh, one thing. You want to be able to preview your content before it goes live, but you also want to be able to actually send your content live when it's ready. So we'll talk about a couple different workflows on how to make that work. We're going to use the build hooks module on the Drupal side. So if you're following along, make sure you have your Drupal site ready. You're going to have to download and install the build hooks module. Let's get started. So you can see I'm on the build hooks page, drupal.org slash project slash build underscore hooks. We're using the 8.x-2.2 version today. And essentially what it does is it allows you to trigger a build hook on any service provider that supports build hooks, which Netlify is one of those service providers. And you can see the typical use cases for static sites built with Gatsby. So perfect for what we need. You're going to want to make sure you have this module downloaded and installed. So if you go to your Drupal website, and again, this is the publicly available Drupal website that was used when Netlify built the site in the last episode. And if I search for build hooks here, you can see I've turned on the build hooks module and the build hooks for Netlify module. Build hooks does have a few permissions. So some of the permissions are for the ability to create and manage front end environments. This is probably just an admin permission and if you want to allow users to trigger deployments. So this, in this case, you may want your content editor to be able to trigger a deployment if you're having manual deployments. So we'll talk about the three different options for how to configure your deployments as we set this up, but just keep this in mind, right? That you may want other users to be able to manually trigger deployments to your web or to your Netlify site or your endpoint. In this configuration section, if we go to configuration, there's a build hooks section here with three different uh, menu items. Build hook settings is the one we'll take a look at first because we don't really have to change anything here. What build hooks does is it logs any changes to specific types of entities and you can tell it what entities are really the important entities or the entities that build hooks should watch or monitor. Content is going to be your main one, but if your Gatsby site was pulling in something, some other entity type besides content, you would want to make sure you select it here. In our case, our Gatsby site is only pulling in our article content type, so we don't have to worry about anything besides content, but just keep in mind you may need to uh, configure this depending on how you built your Gatsby site and what entities you're actually pulling with your GraphQL queries. So we'll leave that at the default. And we're going to go to front end environments. So your Drupal site could have multiple environments. You could configure it to send build hooks, rebuild requests to multiple different places when you change content on your site. In this case, we're only going to have one and that's going to be to trigger a rebuild on our Netlify site. So I'm going to click add a new environment and we want to use Netlify. Again, you can use this with other hosting providers that support build hooks, but we're using Netlify, so we'll click Add New Environment here. Now we have a form we have to fill out. And so this is where we're going to have to go back to our Netlify site. Before we do, I'm going to just call this Netlify Prod. This is the production site on hosts on Netlify. You can call it whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Now we need to go to our Netlify site. If you remember last time, my site was sad Golic, Golic. I don't really know how to pronounce that, but we'll go with it. 
And I'm going to copy this URL right here and drop it into the URL section. Now this next part is the deployment strategy. And this gets uh, a little, uh, there, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Manually only is what we're going to leave it here. And what manually only means is that you're going to have to click a deploy button in order for it actually to rebuild your site. And how this might be useful is if you are using live preview, this kind of builds a content workflow for you. You have your preview environment, so editors can change content on the site, they can see a live preview version of your site, and then once you get all your changes ready, maybe that's only one article, or maybe it's 10 articles that you modified or changed, then you can go to the deployment settings, click deploy, and it'll actually deploy it to your live site. So you kind of have that built-in staging environment. You have your preview server ser that serves as your staging, your content staging environment, and then you have your live site that doesn't get deployed to until you go in and actually click the button. You could set it up to run on cron, which means anytime Drupal cron runs, if there's changes, it'll automatically deploy. And you could also have it set up when content is updated. So anytime you saved a page or a, uh, an article, for instance, it would automatically deploy over to Netlify. If you're not using preview, you may want to use when content is updated. But the problem with that is you don't really know what it's going to look like. You could configure two different Netlify environments. You could configure one as a preview. And anytime content was updated, you could send it off and have it preview. And you could also cons or create one that was more your production environment where it would maybe be manually. So you could do this. It wouldn't quite be live preview like we had in the past episode, but it could still work as um, a way to preview your content before actually sending it live. Just keep in mind that you have to wait for this rebuild to happen where when we went through a few episodes ago on how to set up live preview, you could view it right after you save the page. So that was kind of nice. Go back and watch that if you want to set up uh, a little bit better of a content editorial workflow. So we're going to leave it manually. That was a long-winded explanation to say we're going to leave it exactly as it was by default. The weight, we're just going to leave that as zero. Build hook URL. So we need to go ahead and create that. If you go into your Netlify site, go to site settings, under build and deploy, there's a build hook section. We're going to add a build hook. We're going to build our master branch. Again, you could have multiple different build hooks triggering builds on different branches. And we'll just call this content rebuild because we're rebuilding our content. You could call it whatever you want. It's just so you know what it is or where this build hook's coming from. So you could call it Drupal site, whatever you wanted. I'm going to grab this build hook URL and drop it in here. My git branch is going to be master. That's the git branch we're going to be rebuilding. And I also need to find the API ID. If I go back to the general settings on my Netlify site, the API ID is right there. Just go ahead and copy it and drop that in and save it. And now you'll notice up here there's a Netlify prod. It says zero changes. So all I need to do is go to a page here and I'm going to change something just so I have some kind of change. You can see all I did was change the title from fruit to vegetables. I could make any amount of changes I wanted. I could change the image. I could do anything. If I save it, you can now see up on in the menu, Netlify prod one change one changes. Uh, so if you did a bunch more, it would just queue up all these different changes. Since I did this manually, I it won't actually deploy yet. I'll have to click here. You can see it gives you some information. It tells you the change log. It says this is what was updated. It tells you the recent deployment. And then all I need to do is start a new deployment to the Netlify prod environment. And it's going to deploy this to that build hooks URL that we set up. You can see it's queued. If I go to my Netlify site, I go to deploys, you'll see there's a building status here. So you can see it did trigger this deploy to happen. And now what that's going to do is the Gatsby build process is going to run. 
it's going to go out to my Drupal site, it's going to pull all the content in, it's going to rebuild the Gatsby site, and when it's done at this URL, I'll be able to see any changes that I had. Now keep in mind, this is my production environment, so in theory I'm deploying without really knowing how it's going to look. This is where live preview and uh, potentially uh, using multiple preview environments that you can set up here in Netlify would be handy. But we'll go ahead and wait till it's published and it looks like it has finished. So if I go here, and again, I just am gonna go to this articles page. You can see grow your own vegetables, not fruit now. So it worked. It went ahead and it deployed. Now keep in mind, um, there's a couple more settings that we can look at here. In our Netlify site, if we go to site settings, and I believe it's under build and deploy. You can see the deploy log visibility logs are public. If we wanted to change this to private, we could do that, but then we need to do an extra step in order to get our Drupal site to be able to keep track of this deployment log. All we'd have to do is we could save this. I'm not going to in this case, but I would need to go to my user settings, applications, and I would need to create a new access token here. Just give it a name, it'll give you an access token, and then you come over to configuration, build hooks Netlify settings, and drop your access token in there. That way you can actually see what, um, or your Drupal site can actually still communicate with your, your Netlify site and pull in that log information if you make your logs private. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but if you want to make it a little bit more secure and you don't want those logs to be available at a public URL, you can do that. That's really all there is to it. You can see it's really easy to set up very complex content editorial workflows or at, at minimum, just make it really easy to deploy your changes from your Drupal site to get your Gatsby site hosted on Netlify to rebuild automatically. So it's very convenient and easy to use a Drupal backend with a Gatsby site hosted on Netlify. As always, make sure you follow me on Twitter. If you have any other questions or requests for future videos, make sure to reach out either on Twitter, on the YouTube comments, or you can probably find my email or use the contact form on the Code Karate site. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.